in the middle of a session and I think um, the penguin had to whistle something or hum something <laughs> and you started doing one of your comp compositions and I remember saying, Paul, something we don't have to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for, please. For the penguin boy, why are there so many songs about rainbows? They don't need them in this world. <laughs> Welcome, friends and fans, to another episode of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And today, we are going back to Gotham City with eight incredibly talented guests from Batman the Animated Series. So without further ado, let's dash to the roof, flash the bat signal, and bring them out. Our first guest is an Academy and Grammy Award-winning songwriter, composer, and actor whose body of work includes, and is absolutely not limited to, Battle for the Planet of the Apes, The Phantom of the Paradise, and is representing the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers. Today, he joins us to discuss his organization's Sunlight of the Spirit Award program, as well as giving voice to Oswald Chesterfield Cobblepot, also known as the Penguin. Please welcome Mr. Paul Williams. Yeah, hey, Patty. How are you, Patty? How is everybody? I am good, Paul. How are you doing? You know, life at this point, it's all a gift. It's all a gift, my friend. Oh, I hear you on that. And uh, I think we've all, as, as tumultuous as the year has been, uh, I think we're all going to get through the other side and we're all going to have a little, maybe a little more gratitude in our hearts. Oh, absolutely. And the one thing that, that this has done is, you know, we, instead of talking about our itineraries, how are you doing? Well, I was in Detroit last week and then I went to, when people say, how are you doing? You actually know because you've probably been in one place for many, many, many months now. So God bless everybody. I hope everybody is healthy that is watching and staying safe. Safe. Stay safe. We're going to get through this. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, you're here today. You're also again. You're uh, you're here to represent, and you're uh, raising awareness and funds for the Sunlight of the Spirit Award. Can you tell us a little bit about that? You know, for for the last twelve years, I've been with ASCAP, the American Society of Composers. Well, I've been a member since 1972. It's a membership organization that collects our royalties for us, and advocates for us in in uh, in D.C. and the like. Uh, and when I became president in, in 2009, I talked about the fact that, you know, I'm really passionate about my recovery and I, I spent a lot of time around the, the country talking about recovery. I can't be the president of ASCAP if I have to stop talking about the fact that I'm a recovering alcoholic and addict, you know, and I did it till, till the wheels fell off, you know. And what I was told is, no, not only do we not you know, to, to not want, want to talk about about it just you know jump in and how you know how can we assist what could you know what what could we use this platform for and there's an ASCAP foundation which is an amazing organization that you know brings music and music lessons and the like to kids and all so we started the sunlight of the spirit award for people that are exemplary in recovery and also in 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 music as well so so it's a great chance for me to do this and when I talk to people and I get some money it's all going to go to the sunlight of the spirit awards you know so yeah. Pardon? Sober songwriters. Yeah, to sober songwriters, my <laughs> wife. I have, I have a great memory. I'd like you to meet her sometime. <laughs> well, if she wants to join us and join you, always welcome. Uh, Paul, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you for supporting this great cause. And I, I, I from the bottom of my heart, I have been such a fan of your body of work uh, as a songwriter and as an actor and everything else. And uh, I, I hope you can come back and we could talk about it a little more. Absolutely. My Great. Pleasure. And uh, especially Goliath. You were a wonderful surprise. I didn't know you were awesome. Hey, it's Paul Williams. You know, so. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. Ah, our next guest is an actress, singer, and novelist, and film critic whose body work includes the new adventures of Flash Gordon, Centurions, and Baldur's Gate. Today, she joins us discussing giving voice to Dr. Pamela Isley, a.k.a. Poison Ivy. Please welcome back the always lovely Diane Pershing. Thank you so much, Patty. Oh, thank you. Thank you for coming back and seeing us again. It's always a pleasure. Well, I just love you and I love to talk. So none of it's a problem. Thank you. Not at all. Not at all. And uh, that is a floral print, uh, print outfit you're wearing? It's quite floral. And I was noticing that all my other panelists are sort of muted and I go like, yeah, but oh well. You are poison ivy. You are supposed to be floral at all times, even in the cold. And I am. Indeed. That's true. That's you're, true. You're, yeah. Diane, you're always a bright, bright star, and we're always glad to have you. 
Oh, so sweet. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Absolutely. And our next guest is a veteran actor whose amazing body of work includes a Tony winning performance in Love, Valor, Compassion, Gremlins 2, and 52 Pickup. Today, he joins us discussing giving voice to Edward Nigma, aka The Riddler. Please welcome back the always awesome John Glover. Hello, hello, hello. 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 <laughs> you know, the talking, you talk faster than anybody I know, Patty. I have to. We got to get people. I got to get out, you know? Yes. All right. Get That's the rest good. of them. Oh, all right. First okay. of all, John, how are you doing? Swell. Swell. All right. I'll swell take it. I'll swell. And again, in our crazy times, swell is the new awesome. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love this man. <laughs> John, glad to have you back in good spirits and in good health. Uh, and our next guest is an actor whose credits include Disney's Hercules, City Slickers, and Total Recall. Today he joins us to give talk about giving voice to Detective Harvey Bullock. Please welcome for the first time on our stage, Robert Costanzo. Hey, how are you? How you doing? <laughs> good, Bobby, how are you? <laughs> I'm glad I made it. I'm, you know, I'm technologically hopeless. As I tell people, I don't have a website. I'm scared of spiders. So anyway, Patty, it's good. It's, uh, what can I say? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm washing my hands more than Punch's Pilot these days. If you'll get, if you get the, uh, the Catholic school reference and, uh, uh, uh it's good, you know, in a, in a funny way, the pandemic makes you as an actor say, well, you know, I could have, had a three picture deal with Universal, but you know I can't go out in the pandemic. And but uh, no, no, life life is good, and th this is great to see everyone and get back together and uh, work on our impact sounds and all the fun things we did with the great Andrea Romano. And uh, it's good to see Diane from the SBV days and John and Paul Williams and I. We've had a few laughs. I was going to say a few drinks, but no, I won't. We, we didn't do that. <laughs> no, but uh, anyway, glad That's to be here. Thank you. Absolutely glad to be. And uh, just real quick, uh, during uh, lockdown and quarantine or whatever, I revisited a lot of old favorites, including Hill Street Blues. And uh, I, I, yeah, I was just like, wow, you had a you had a you had a great big great big part in that little arc. Yeah, yeah, you know Hill, yeah Hill Street Blues. Those were the those were the great Bochco days. And just a, a quick addendum to that, I had done a few things for Bochco, and then David Milch, who created. Hill Street, and then NYPD Blue, which I wound up doing. Mm -hmm. Every actor will appreciate this. I saw him, I was reading for something else on the 20th century lot, and he hands me this beautiful embossed, this script with an embossed badge on it, which became NYPD Blue. And he says, Costanzo, pick a part. And I go, really? You know, actors. I looked through this thing rather quickly. Thank goodness for the nuns and speed reading. And I said, <laughs> I like that... Uh, I like that uh, alcoholic cop, uh, Sipowitz. He goes, that one's taken. Mm. And I said, thanks. I said, thanks a lot. That's what, so I wound up, I got a, I got a nice role, but I got killed after seven episodes. You know, I did a show. I did a show with Mark Harmon. We lasted eight episodes and then he did NCIS. But I ain't complaining, am I? It was good. Life's good. Yeah, no. That's show <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, absolutely. Uh, our next guest is an actress, producer, and author whose credits include The Miracle Worker, Babylon 5, and of course, Little House on the Prairie. Today, she joins us to discuss giving voice to Barbara Gordon, a.k.a. Batgirl. Please welcome for the first time at Galaxy Con Live, Melissa Gilbert. Hey. Hello. Hey. Hey, hey, Melissa. How are you? Good. I'm good. I'm good. Oh, so glad to have you here. How are you doing in your part of the world? I'm doing really well in my part of the world. I'm in upstate New York right now, um, but my heart and one of my kids and his pregnant wife and my prayers and thoughts are with the people of Texas right now. My son and his wife are in Austin. They're okay. The grandbaby in, in vitro is okay. They have water, power, and heat finally. Um, and I just hope that it all resolves soon and everyone there can can heal and move on and I'll be thinking about them all and sending love. As, as we all are. Well, once again, thank you so much for joining us today. It's an absolute pleasure. It's fun to be here. This is really fun. This is my first time being back with all of you guys and, and doing yeah. one of these things. It's, it's kind of great. And I, I got me right back. That's You're right. Fine. Well, let's bring out the rest of the band. Yeah, I got my guy. Our next guest, the stage is Steve Actor, whose numerous credits include Hung, Rock and Roll High School, and Defenders of the Earth. Today, he joins us to discuss giving voice to Richard Grayson, formerly known as Robin, later known as Nightwing. Please welcome back our friend, Lauren Lester. 
Hey, hey, Lori. hey everybody. Hey. Hi, Lori. How are you doing, Pat? I, I'm Patty. I'm looking at this group here. We, we <laughs> really have gotten the band back together. Look at this. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. How are you doing, Lauren? I'm doing great. Awesome. I'm I'm living in New York and uh, enjoying the snow. I'm a California boy, but I moved to New York a couple of years ago and I'm just loving this thing called seasons. It's like, what is that? Mm. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. Well, as, as I hear a, it's fire and rain. As, as a Floridian, I know not what you speak of, but yes. I am intrigued. <laughs> and speaking of intrigued, our next guest is an actor whose body of work includes Kennedy, Turo, Duty, and Dynasty. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of billionaire socialite Bruce Wayne, a.k.a. Batman. Please welcome back Kevin Conroy. Hey. Hi, everybody. Hey, hey Kevin. Good to see you, man. So good How to are see you? The gang is back. The gang is yeah, back. absolutely. <laughs> you know, Patty, one of the wonderful things about this business is getting to work with um, people over and over again that keep coming through your career. Like Melissa and I were just uh, reminiscing about a TV movie we did together over 30 years ago. Wow, Killer Instinct. And John and I have done what two miniseries together and a lot of a plays. season at the Old Globe. We did uh, yeah. Much Ado About Nothing and. King Lear. He was Edgar to my Edmund. Yeah, you were. Or I was Edmund to his Edgar. Yeah. And um, so we, you know, you, your your careers cross paths, and it's so wonderful that you develop these relationships over time, and you watch these actors develop over time. It's and really then, of course, there was all of the road pictures that Paul Williams and I did. They were just. <laughs> there yeah. You know. yeah. There you go. Smoking in the band of one, two, and even worse, you know. <laughs> The thing, the thing about what you know, what Kevin is saying that is, I think is, you can say about all of us. The great thing about what we do is we don't have to give up our fan cards. So I could walk on the set with Andrea where, and we're into the studio and look around and go, "Oh my God!" You know, and there is, I mean, anybody from from Roddy McDowell to you up and down the list of the great people that came by to do Batman. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and speaking and speaking of heroes, let's bring out everybody's hero in this panel. She's a paragon of modern animation, an actress, director, and casting director whose credits include the original DuckTales, Tiny Toon Adventures, and Animaniacs. Today, she joins us to discuss selecting these wonderfully talented performers for their roles in Batman the Animated Series, Superman the Animated Series, Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, and Batman Beyond. Please welcome back Andrea Romano. Hey! How are you, Dan? <laughs> so good to see you all of my sweet children. My yes, 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 yes. Yes, mommy. Yes. The drug. Yeah, but you, you, you can't write. You can't write us off on your income tax now. I uh, know. Damn it! Oh, back. I, I, the, the drag about being brought on last is I'm watching all you guys have fun and chatting, and I'm sitting here going, "No, wait! I want to be chatting with them." <laughs> You're so good to fantastic. see you all, and I'm so happy to see Paul and Bobby and Melissa who we don't get to see very yeah. often. Yeah. And I'm very grateful that you guys are here with us. And I just love all of you guys so much. I I miss people. I, you know, my job since I retired is to travel and to have experiences and meet new people and see friends. And I haven't been able to do it for 12 months and I miss you all deeply. Deeply. We miss you too. It's great Thank to see you. you. Thank you. Thank let, you. Let, let's all let's do let's all do an impact sound for you now. <laughs> <laughs> I love your cell behind you, Bobby. I love that you have the bullock cell. Yeah, I got the bullock cell. I, nice. I, Very nice. I, I've become I've become a total prostitute. You know, that's it. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> well, Andrea, how are you doing? Thank you for asking. I'm great. Uh, I'm healthy. I have uh, two, uh, not even two weeks to wait to get my second uh, shot, my COVID shot. Hopefully they'll have enough vaccines to have it. To have it. Uh, and my husband and I have been here for the year together. And fortunately, we have a lovely home and a nice backyard. And my garden has never looked better. It's just <laughs> had so much attention for the last many months. And, Where do you live? Um, I live over near Valley College. Do you know uh. where that is? Van Nuys. They call it Valley it's Glen, in, but it's we know in, it's, it's Van Nuys. In, must be in the yeah. valley. It is. It is. It's it's lovely. It's a wonderful home. And I paid it off this year. So I own it a hundred percent. Which is oh, nice. yeah. it's a different okay. world. I'm debt free. I'm retired and debt free. So I'm happy. Thank you for asking, Patty. And you have a full head of hair. 
And I have a massive amount of hair that I haven't figured out how to get rid of. I bought Rogenio a, a professional hair clipper for Christmas, and I'm not letting him anywhere near me. <laughs> like, no, no, no. Always, for those, for those who don't understand that difference, Andrea always has her hair cut very, 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 very short. Like Yes. Very short. This is the I first don't even know how to deal with this. I've seen her with a head of hair. That's what's great. That's what's great about animation. We don't have to worry about continuity. Right? <laughs> uh, well, distinguished right. guests, once again, thank you all for joining us. As always, we here at GalaxyCon are looking forward to the day when the world does get a little bit back to normal and we can once again host you on our physical stages and get you all back in front of your fans. In the meantime, we have the GalaxyCon virtual stage. And once again, it's a pleasure to have you all here. Thank Great to be, here. to be here. Nice to be here so, so our team is going through the chat room right now, pulling out the questions. In the meantime, uh, I've been able to ask uh, uh, previously uh, how you all got your roles. What I would love to do is, for those uh, just joining us, I would love to hear how Melissa, Bobby, and Paul, how you came to your roles on Batman the Animated Series. And Andrea, I would love to hear uh, your side of that equation as well. Okay. So, uh, Bobby, go ahead. Why don't you start us off? Um, oh, oh, thanks for putting me on the spot. How did, what do you mean, how did I, how did I get to my role? Well, you know what? I was tired of playing the usual Sir John Gilgood roles and Olivier, and I, and I, and I told my agent, I want to stretch a little, you know, you know, cause I'm, I'm really from, uh, you know, Lancaster, England. And, uh, but I, but I have this face. So I decided to adopt this Italian American persona. So I picked the name of a butcher in Brooklyn and became Bobby Costanzo. And then and then I went to Andrea, who knew me from the old Vic, and said, Robert, really? You're 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 actually going to do but now anyway, uh so so Bullock uh it it just it, it was a, a marriage made in purgatory, I guess, but I, I know uh I don't exactly remember the whole casting thing, but I remember it was a lot of fun and working for this fabulous lady. Who, uh, who just really, you know, we had so much fun. And really the people who came in, they were all wonderful actors. Yeah. So that thing yeah. that we all it's see when we real. audition for uh, cartoons, they always say, make it real, not cartoonish. And then I say, well, it is a cartoon though, but she did make it real and it was always a gas. And it's really one of the highlights of my professional life. Uh, it's been great. It's, oh, nice it was, to see it, that. It, it, I, yeah. I remember, Bobby, that you auditioned through the process, through your agent. You sent in an yeah. audition, and and it was one of those times when you're hearing a lot of people doing character voices. So everybody's putting on their Brooklyn or their Queens or their whatever mm -hmm. accent, and they're trying to be New York, you know, tough cop. And then you spoke, and you have what we call a voice with character, as opposed to somebody doing yeah. a character voice. Uh, and, uh -huh. and we all listened, Bruce Tim and everybody involved, and went, well, that's the guy. And that's the guy. So you had wow. the voice already going for you, but it really was your acting that won you the role, which was oh, it was wow. it came so naturally to you, and it seemed to be no problem for you to kick up the energy to make it animation energy without going cartoony, as you said. And so that's how you came yeah. to get it. You actually went through the whole audition process and just yes, won you, the role. You, you, yeah, you, you remember the process more than I do. I know I auditioned, yep. and I think did we not? Then we eventually met, didn't we? Before yes, I, uh, I always. Um, yeah, yeah. For someone who I don't know that I'm considering for a series regular, I bring them in and work sure. with them so that I know that they can follow direction, that they understand when I say I need it to be this or I need to do that. And and uh, and then you totally passed with flying colors. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> you know, and, you, you know, j just as a, you know, a sort of an addendum to that nowadays, I'm sure everyone feels the same way. We're all self-taping at home, which is horrible, you know, no I don't think anyone likes it that much. You've got to be like a, you know, a wardrobe art director, cinematographer, director, and put yourself on tape and throw it out there into the, you know, ethos. So it's, uh, I, I, I yearn for the days we can go back and see, you know, meet in person. And uh, it was so great. Thank you, Andrea. For that. You're so great. welcome, Bobby. Thank you. So, Melissa, how did you become uh, an entire generation's first crush? I, <laughs> I, I, um, I was well animated, let's put it that way. <laughs> I, um, I remember getting a phone call, and I, 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 my memory might be a little fuzzy because it's been a minute, 
But I remember getting a phone call saying, would you be interested in doing something like this? And I know for a fact that I lost my mind because I grew up watching Batman on television, the Adam West Batman. And Batman was my first actual crush. Um, and I actually would have conversations with my tiny little self saying, well, you know, you can't really marry Batman because he's so much older than you. You really should marry Robin because Robin's more appropriate. But then if you become Batgirl, you don't really have to marry either of them. So maybe someday you could be Batgirl. And I would literally have dreams as a kid where I was Batgirl. So when this happened, it was it was such a gift. And I had no idea what to expect when I went into the first sessions and and walking in and, and seeing everybody and, and, and having the chance to be there. My first day was with everyone. And we were all in, in a room together. Lauren, I think you were even, you were there. I think so. But you were there. It's quite a while ago. And mm -hmm. um, it was so, it was extraordinary. It, it was the closest thing I think I will experience to be, to doing like a radio play. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. So yeah. The romance of what we were doing was so intense. And I am so grateful that I got to be a part of it, even for the short period of time that I did. And to have the opportunity to bring this character to life, I cannot thank you enough. You gorgeous woman. <laughs> you know, it's so funny, Melissa, as I sit here and listen to you now, and as you said, it's been a minute, you still sound young 20s. Your yeah. voice still sounds young 20s. This is one of those beautiful things about voice work, is it doesn't matter what's happening with the hair color and all that. It's it's about whether or not you can pull it off. And I genuinely exactly. believe you could still sound in your young 20s, because you just do, naturally. Thank you. Yeah. Thank I'm you. glad you had fun. I'm glad you enjoyed oh. it. And I'm glad you enjoyed the ensemble record because that's always the way to do it. It's yeah. a, it, it was absolutely dreamy and I would do it again in a heartbeat. Um, it just, it was, it was one of the highlights, like Bobby said, of my career and the chance to say to people, I'm back girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of, but I am. Uh -huh. Well done. <laughs> Absolutely. And Paul, how did uh, how did you get involved into this? Well, you know, I have to first of all, I have to say, what, what, you know, Melissa brings up something really important, that whole thing about our memory at this point in my life. I listen to down as maybe Ville. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you ever in Philadelphia? Maybe. Did you ever work with because she has it? Maybe, you know. I, but I did remember who introduced us. We met, met through Danny Aiello, Bobby. I oh, would, oh wow. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Who I did a, a had had done a fresh out in out of rehab, did uh, did a, a mini series called People Like Us with 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 Danny, and met so many wonderful actors through Danny. Because anytime you, you want, go, you want, hey Paul, you want a quick Danny Aiello impression? Go, yeah, go. I want to see you. Well, let me tell you something. I'm an actor. I'm a tele. I'm a screen actor, and there's no way in the world that I would do animation. That's beneath me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but God, God, God rest. God yeah, rest God his soul. Me. He was he and was you, wonderful. You yeah. immediately you just immediately miss him. You know, I was I mean, uh, 1992 is when I started working on on Batman. I did I think seven episodes is what I saw, and and you know I mean I've made my living as a songwriter since since yeah. <laughs> seven. I've always been you know I always tell people I'm an out of work actor. Oh, the only time I ever just absolutely felt like my childhood dreams were coming true was when I'd walk on a set, or walk in the recording studio. And and again, what, what I think all of us think is that the, you walk into the studio and you never know who's going to be there. You know, and, and wow. except the one person that is always there is Andrea. And I don't know if yeah. any time that I've ever done an, an, an audi a, a rather an interview about, about that, you know. Uh, or any of us have that we don't talk about Andrea because it was just the way you made us feel. And, you know, I would always say, feed me lines. I, I, you know, I love to hear, you know, show me, show me. You know, I, I, some actors go, I don't need to hear that. No, no I want the shortcut. And I'm, it was just, it was a treat to do it. No, I, I thought that, your voice was perfect. Didn't I? I auditioned too, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, you did. And yeah. and I thought your voice was just perfect because, again, a voice with character. You didn't have to push it too much. I don't remember you doing something very strong for the voice, do you? As far as changing no. your voice massively? No. So it just no. had that wonderful, weird, but it was the acting too. But here's the a funny story that I can remember about us working together is we were in the middle of a session and I think um, the Penguin had to whistle something or hum something <laughs> and you started doing one of your comp compositions and i remember saying 
Paul, something we don't have to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for, please. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the the Why are there so many songs about rainbows? They don't need them in this world. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you did come up with something for us. You did come up with a little tune that we were able to use for that, but I do remember there being. Uh, 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 Kevin, could you say Andrea the way you used to say it one time? Say what? Remember the way you used to say Andrea's uh, name? Just say that again. Oh, Andrea. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> He's gone. Yeah. Oh, I love that so much. I, 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 went to, I went to see a shrink about that. That was turning me on. I, <laughs> I, was, very con- I was very confused about things. My very favorite session was the one where Kevin did that to give his level, and then everybody else in the room did it as well. <laughs> yes, was there. Yeah. She did it. Yeah. Everybody was giving their level. Diane, maybe. Yes. Oh, but Andrea, do you, yeah. do you remember the first time I did that? No. I remember asking you to. Batman falls off of a building and he okay. lands with a crash on the ground. So it was like, right. ah! <laughs> Oh, Andrea. <laughs> yes, I, I, I did it as the stay alive moan, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. You Keep alive grown. Care. I Just did. I like, had to leave the room. Exactly. I mean, everybody I was it. so shocked. I know it. And then we couldn't record any show until you had done that. After <laughs> that, that, from that point <laughs> on, right. it was part of giving the level. Right. I need right. to hear that. Right. It, was it, speaks, it speaks to our unconscious. I, I, when you did that, I unbuttoned my top button, and I have no idea why. <laughs> <laughs> and I lit a cigarette, and I have a cigarette. <laughs> 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 you guys are so funny. <laughs> it's so good to be with you all. So good. Only there had been a camera there, just 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 recording all. Of that. <laughs> uh, no, just, uh, the, the times are very full. Uh, our team, all right, our teams let us uh, know that we're good to go on audience questions, so we can go ahead and roll into that one. And I will add to Paul: no one ever has and never will be able to say "Aviary of Doom" the way you did, <laughs> as the Penguin. <laughs> <laughs> Aviary yes. of Doom, flying <laughs> rodent. <laughs> uh, so, and here's one from Demi. She wants to know what oh. scene from the show had the most impact on you. Hmm. A single scene. Hmm. That's hard. That's, that's hard. Is she asking everybody? Yeah, everybody. Oh well, What's I, I had my, my favorite episode uh, for for Poison Ivy was uh, was a Home and Garden or yeah yeah yeah. yeah. And 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 it was a very complex show because she's she thinks she believes she pretends that she's a mother and a wife and she has babies and a husband and all this stuff and then there's the moment when the big reveal comes where she doesn't really they're all plants you know yeah. mm-hmm. and there's and there's an agony about her facing the reality at the same time that Batman does. And there's a pain. There's a pain, and and I remember as an actor going, thank you, thank you, thank you. It was very very moving to me, and I, I remember to this day. And it is nearly thirty years ago. Wow, oh. wow, indeed, yeah. indeed. So, Kevin, you had your hand raised. Well, what 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 I found I think was so wonderful about the show, and the reason it's resonated for so long, was that the scripts were so multi-layered um, yeah. they had to appeal to kids but they weren't written for kids they were really written for adults they were complicated characters and they were complicated stories which is why most of the audience was actually adult and for bruce wayne for playing this character uh, the the fun of the role is the psychological drama that he goes through the fact that he he formed this persona as a reaction to watching his parents be murdered as a child. It, I, I think it was either get crushed by life or survive as this incarnation of a Batman. And 
any play, any shows that dealt with that psychodrama that Bruce Wayne goes yeah. through uh, appealed to me. And mm-hmm. and one of the best was uh, Mask of the Phantasm, the movie. It goes into the whole background of how he got created, um, why he got created. And then he falls in love, and he doesn't think he's ever going to be able to love, but he realizes he has to get released from his vow to his parents. So he goes to their grave, and it's a very emotional scene where he begs them to release him from his vow to them because he, he realizes that life isn't about vengeance, it's about love. And just at that moment, a flock of bats come screaming out of the earth and pull him back down to his fate. It's an amazing, it's a beautiful scene. That's a great one. That scene was one of the most powerful scenes for me to play. I love playing this. Yeah. That was really good. I remember that one. (laughs) Wonderful. And the animal was just brilliant. That was the other thing is you watch the show and the, you know, the look of the show was like nothing that I'd ever seen in in an animation, in a cartoon series before, ever. It was so dark. It was, it was the first time they ever opted to use black paper for the backgrounds, as opposed to using white paper and coloring it. They used black paper and colored on top of that, which gave the show such a dark wonderful look and then that sort of what they call it it was um the style do you remember kevin what uh, bruce tim called it it wasn't just um was it noir yes but it was also it was something else it was, was something noir. Word for it. right yeah. it was like a double it was uh, i'll think of it before we finish and i'll mention it but it was i just loved the style it was so i mean it, the thing was he had you know batman had these massive shoulders and so many of the characters had these massive shoulders and yet most of the women were more naturally drawn, drawn, although curvaceous as could be, they really were. Oh yes, oh but, yes. Um, but the but the men had yes, yes, Melissa. Yeah. No, but I I do recall actually in one of my first reveals imitating Batman that the first thing I I did listen to me I I did <laughs> was to take out the shoulder pads. Uh, in uh, in the in the animation, I pulled yeah. the shoulder pads out. Oh, I love that! Oh. I that love, I didn't remember that. I love that you remember that. Very cool. Very cool. Was it was fun. such an interesting show. I mean, I I have since, and we all have worked on so many more. But yeah, it was groundbreaking at the time. It was there were things that we were doing. We were individually scoring episodes. That was massively expensive and so worthwhile yeah. the gorgeous music of shirley walker and yeah. then um the people that followed after that were uh, still astounding and um i mean the time and energy and effort and bruce tim was a producer who would not allow things to just slip by it, it was if he had to call two retakes three retakes four retakes for animation he would do it because yeah. he knew what he wanted it to look like which is how i was with the recording i knew what i wanted yeah. it to sound like and he and i were very much of the same mind and so if i had to i would beat up people long enough to get you know what it was that we needed but you know paul you talk about we would i'm happy to give a line reading at any given time the trick is not to let people know that you're line reading them which basically right. means just do it really really fast yeah. do it so that five minutes later they go wait a minute she did that line for you know you don't even want people to be embarrassed about it the truth is i i know what the line was supposed to sound like i i had worked on it i had it prepped i knew what it was and some people fight that but better to i love it when you guys have your own ideas and you come up with something completely different than what i thought of and that's what those were the times that i would turn to bruce and say you know what it's not the way i heard the scene in my head when i prepped it it's not the way you described it to me but it's organic and real and it happened here on the spot should we go with their reading and change the scene slightly to make that work? And oftentimes you guys would convince Bruce Tim, which in and of itself is a major feat because he had yeah. his mindset usually, but you guys could convince him. Yeah, he, he gave up smoking a long time ago. I know, but he, back in the day, he was doing the characters of himself with a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. Oh and my God, he smoked. Being acidic and, you know, <laughs> everything else. Yeah, and was yeah. this, was the style Dark Deco? Is that what he called it? Dark Deco. That's it. Dark Deco. That's it. Was oh, it Dark is that Deco? it? Dark, Dark Deco? Deco. 
Dark 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 that was Dark it. Thank you. Not, nothing to do with uh, nothing to do with Gordon Gecko, the character from. No, oh. no, 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 Gecko, no. Gecko. Lauren, <laughs> uh, how about you? What, what was yeah. that? the the big uh, scene where um, Batman won't let up in uh, in his attack on Danny Zuko? He won't he won't let up, and uh, finally you know, is a break, is a break. And I, I'm, I'm done with him and I'm, I'm moving on and I'm becoming a uh, Nightwing. And it was very, it was a very dramatic, uh, you know, very powerful. The writing was terrific. And then later in that episode, he actually punches Batman, you know, and it was, uh, I thought that was old wounds. So the scenes in that uh, definitely had the most impact on me. I, yeah, I yeah. agree. That was definitely, definitely it. So, John, you got a a, a moment you can recall? It was that was challenging or interesting? No, I, <laughs> no, I don't. I, I was only I was only on three things, three three episodes. But I'd been working. I I got a call to go first to do some Animaniacs. I was shiny pants and I go in and, 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 and I could walk to the studio because I lived right uh, on the Nickel Torino. No, no, I don't know where I yeah. lived then, but I could walk to yeah, the studio. Were, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. We were recording so, over in Silver Lake, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Which is around the corner from where I live now. But anyway, sorry. <laughs> that's all right. But I, had, I just went and had fun with the, all these people who were so talented. And the Riddler, yeah, the Riddler, yeah was uh, so clever and sure of himself and cocksure of himself. So that was just fun to play. I got to be sure of myself. Uh, oh, oh, and what I, I loved, think, Andrea, yeah. was that you, yes. you, when I'd come in, like the second time, you'd have a tape of what I did the first time and you'd play it for me as a, as a reminder, which right, I thought was so. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, you just always, to have that little, extra yep. you know reminder because you probably would have remembered it but just so that it's right there and we don't it, you know it, halfway through say you know what i think the voice was different i always felt like giving you guys everything that you needed was you my did. pleasure yeah. and my job Very it just good. made it easier for all of us once we got there the, the I, i've often described casting as making a cake and directing as eating the cake with everybody who helped make it and so i i always loved that you had everything you needed to eat the cake. You know what I mean? You, yeah. you, you could put all that work aside because you had it already. You had it well in advance of the sessions. And we're talking about when we first started, we were not sending you scripts by computer. We were printing them out. We're not even printing yeah. them out. We were typing them, Xeroxing them, stapling them or whatever, and sending them off to your house by messenger. Yeah. So you had it ahead of time uh, and then any reference that we could and that kind of stuff. But yeah, that was, I, I, I like that part of the job. I always wanted that for me. So why wouldn't I supply you guys with that? Sure. The wonderful thing about working with Andrea is because there are always new actors coming in every week and many of them had never done a voice before, an animated voice before. Yeah. You brought in a lot of actors from film and TV and theater who were new to this. And you could sense their trepidation when they came in, but people immediately sense that Andrea likes actors. She's on your side. Yep. Yep. She's there to work for you and with you. And uh, that's an incredible feeling of support. And that lets people open up and experiment and try things, you know? Um, Thank you. That, that was, it, was a, it was a very unique yeah. experience working with Andrea. Uh, I always treated actors like I wanted to be treated treated when I was acting. You know, I, yeah. I always try to treat everybody the way I thought actors should be treated, which is with respect. And you know, you think about it: do you treat an actor badly and then expect to go get a good performance out of them? I know. You make them feel terrible and then you expect them to do their job as best as possible. And we're at the beginning of the process. If we don't get it right here, all the rest of the stuff that follows is going to fail. It's all going to be lesser because we didn't get it right. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Patty. You were asking no, Bobby. Not at all. Bobby, go ahead and bring us home. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, just to, to follow up on what Kevin was saying, uh, Bullock, I'm trying, it was one, I think I had done Hercules, a character before Bullock. I'm not sure, but the beautiful thing in doing this the way we did it was uh, Andrea did because I I would all, I would when I started doing voice work I think I did more commercials 
And, you know, one of the things in, in, in radio spots, or obviously this, there is a visual, but it's not you, it's the character, is you want to do something more with your voice. I guess the word is to push, to indicate the words we all hate as actors, because they all sound phony and feel phony. But I think in that room, the way we had that little semicircle and the way we connected with each other, and the way Andrea really made us, you know, feel comfortable. And when she, she wasn't just like, uh, you know, you know, massaging our ego, like do it again. And you really felt like, okay, this feels a little better, a little more organic. And, uh, you know, I couldn't di differentiate or having seen enough of them to see which one that they picked. But sure enough, uh, every, every, every so often when I'd see it, I'd say, that's the way I kind of heard it in my head. Uh, the one, the one I remember is a bullet for Bullock, where we got we got to really see where Bullock lived, where he came from, how he was indebted to Batman but grudgingly wouldn't show it. And you know, you know, when they drew those characters, you know, we as actors, uh, if you've ever done O'Neill, uh, you know, when, when you read Eugene O'Neill, he has descriptions of what the characters are supposed to be. You go, there's no way I could do that, you know. James Tyrone walked in with his eyes hollowed out. He looked as if the world had deserted him. And you go, how am I going to do that in this, <laughs> in this line? And when you, when you see Bullock or Batman and you see the amazing, you know, delineation and, and the subtleties in their face, you go, geez, I hope I got close to that. And sometimes I would say we, we did occasionally. So uh, oh, it, was, it was a lot of, it was I, a good experience. I think O'Neill wrote a couple of the scripts, didn't he? <laughs> well, he helped out a little. No, they were, uh, they were they were too they were too dark even for him. <laughs> Bobby, you bring up a really good point, and that is that a lot of actors get frustrated about animation voice acting because sometimes we have to get to the end result, and that yeah. requires end result acting, and that's hard. And because the truth is, we don't have two weeks to rehearse it to let you find it organically right. what brought you there. Right. I need you to fucking be furious when you get to that line yeah. and you, just yeah. do it again, do it again, do it again. And and and, and unfortunately, we are. You know, I, you know just, oh. just just as an, just as another point along those lines. Working with Rob Reiner, Rob, yeah, working with Rob, who's a you know really precise director and 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 has really got his idea of what he wants. I remember I had a line once which was I understand, and and I kept saying it. And he never completely satisfied him, and he says, Costanzo, uh, I can give you a line reading. I go, give me a line reading. I don't mind. I don't need to feel this organic wave, this epiphany. Life is a series of life is a series of line readings anyway. So as 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 they as they rolling and they say action, say I understand two or three times, and I guarantee you I'll do exactly. And sure enough, I did it. <laughs> and, and on that note, Debbie, thank you for your question. And GalaxyCon viewers, this has been my time with the cast of Batman, the animated series panelists. Uh, once again, it's been an absolute delight for having you all here again. Thank been you for great. coming to the GalaxyCon virtual stage. It's been my pleasure to serve you all today. Thank you, thank everybody. Thank you to our audience for joining us today. Thank you for your great questions. So till then, bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Take care. And please keep washing those hands. See ya.